Do we know how we're starting this one? Not at all. Hey guys, we're Evan and Caitlin. Today we're gonna to be talking to you about how to start a small scale business based around products that are designed for small scale manufacturing. Did I say the things? I think you said the things. There's a lot of words in that sentence. Basically, this means starting small without the risk of a big financial investment, but at the same time being ready to scale up big if the opportunity presents itself and how to scale your business beyond what you can produce in your own shop. We've made a video on how to sell handmade products, which we're gonna link below, but I feel like this is a big topic that we didn't really cover in that last video, so we kinda wanna do a little bit more of a deep dive into that here. And we don't just want to go through saying general tips, so we're going to include some of our personal experiences and walk through how we apply these tips to one of our own products. The first thing that we're going to talk about is kind of this new startup type company that seems to be developing. I feel like it needs a theme song. Mm -hmm. New startup company that seems to be developing. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like in the past, if you were gonna start a business, you kind of fell into one of two categories. You were a big company making big products and that requires a lot of money. Or you were kind of on the smaller side. You were making handmade things and you kind of stay a little bit of a smaller company. Now there seems to be sort of a middle path developing as small scale manufacturing is becoming more accessible to more people. Another thing that really opens up product design to a whole bunch of new people are digital design tools. There are great tutorials out there, it's really accessible, some of them are free or cheap, and designing things in 3D is a lot cheaper when you don't actually have to spend any money at all. Yes, it is free, the cheapest of cheap. <laughs> the cheapest of cheap. <laughs> so with less capital needed, there's less pressure to hit that home run with your very first product idea. You can test it out in the market, see if people buy it, see if they don't, you can do iterations. And there's not that huge loss if you invest a ton of money in machines or casting and the product doesn't work and then you're left with all of that capital wasted. We went through a whole bunch of product ideas before figuring out what we wanted to make. Our very first idea was terrible. We It was good. It was good. It's a good thing. Just the idea of trying to make it at any sort of scale was terrible. Yeah, it was our marquee letters. They're yeah. really pretty. People loved them. People wanted them. We got inquiries a lot about renting or borrowing or buying them, but they're massive and yes. delicate and yes. they would not ship well. And they take a really long time to make, but that was okay. It didn't hurt us. We kept going and kept moving and kept trying out other types of products. We started on our computers in our garage. We came up with what we thought was, yes, the <laughs> same garage we are in now. We came up with what we thought would be a good design and we invested in one 3D printer. Once that printer had paid for itself and we had enough orders to start getting more things and start expanding our product line, we got, well, no, we're, I think up now we have, we're up to four 3D printers yep. and two CNC's. So you can start with just that one small investment. You don't have to buy your entire robot army all at once, although it is cool having a robot army and you can grow from there. Yeah. So I've worked in traditional manufacturing before as an engineer and a product designer, and these big machines that companies have to make their parts are really impressive. But along with those impressive capabilities comes this huge price tag. And ever since we've been working on products at home, I honestly haven't really missed those. You can accomplish so much now with a small shop with limited budgets. We recommend starting with just the design of what you want to make before you ever start making cuts. You can do that with free design software. We use Fusion 360. And once you have that design ready, you can make it yourself for not that much expense. You can go to a local makerspace. And if you don't have a local makerspace nearby, there is the internet. And on the internet, there are people who want to make money with machines. Who will help you out. Who will help you out, yeah. And once you have that proof of concept with your product, if you want to start making it in-house, you can set up a cool little shop for yourself. Like we've done here, you can have, get your, your CNC, 3D printer, power tools, hand tools, whatever it is you need. It seems expensive if you're looking at the prices now, but if you compare it to what you're pulling in with your products, it's a reasonable business cost. And I think it's really cool that it's actually within reach now. And I love that like, if I come up with an idea, I can just 
come out here and realize it using the stuff that we have at home. It's just like Evan's dream. It's Ever since we started getting tools. It's my dream. I've been dreaming of this since I was a little kid. I love yeah. it. These machines are a lot more affordable now. The cost of 3D printers and CNCs over the past few years has gone down so much and there's even payment plans now where you can pay, you know, per month and just it's a lot easier to tackle as you're making profits instead of a big upfront cost, you know, if you're trying to run a business. So I think that's super awesome. And then hopefully by the time that you buy the CNC, you have products designed, you're selling some, and you can use that profit from those sales to pay for the machines that are making the money. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So to give you guys a real world example, we're gonna use this CNC ring dish that we designed. We did all of the design work in CAD, then we did all of the computer-aided manufacturing work to plan out how long it would take, how much material it would use, so we knew all of the variables of this product before we spent any money at all. And we and have a whole video on that, which is, that process is called CAM, on our channel, so we'll link to that too. But after we did all of that digital design work, it was time to test the program and figure out all of the bugs and kinks. So we ran it on our X-Carve right over there and we went through four iterations of the design of the G-Code and that took the machining time from 30 minutes to about 15 minutes and we probably could push it further. And having all of that figured out at the small scale really helps you grow and scale it if your product succeeds and starts going and selling really big. They smell good. <laughs> Do they smell like pecan? Because these are pecan. Just, just like insert like 30 seconds of Caitlin sniffing it right now. <laughs> so now that everything with this design is figured out, if we need to hire help to make more of these or outsource this outside of our shop, we can do that because we know that this design works and we've optimized it. So we've talked a lot about manufacturing it but it is very important. Good product design, I think, is the key to selling things because without the thing, you can't sell it. Man, that's some wise words right there. <laughs> While we're designing things, we try to keep two things in mind, the function and the manufacturability. So we often design things with small-scale manufacturing in mind if it's something that we want to become a product. So for us, that means CNC work, it means 3D printing, or sometimes it's molding and casting. Each of these works with some types of designs and not other types of designs. And you want your design to work with the manufacturing method and not against it. There was once a product I was designing and I happened to add a curve to it. Don't actually know why. It probably, probably trying to be fancy. I might have been trying to be fancy. But I was talking with a machinist later that day. He was looking at it like, this is gonna be really hard. And I was like, no, it should be pretty simple. He's like, well, this curve right there, that's gonna like make it take a long time. I'm like, oh, just take out the curve. That doesn't need to be there at all. He's like, oh, we can get that done real quick. And it probably saved us, we cut the time down by one fifth. So keeping that manufacturability in mind is really important for scaling and growth and your profit margins. For example, with these ring dishes, if you look close, there's kind of a spiral design and it looks kind of cool. That's actually the cut lines from the bit. It's something that in a lot of designs you might have to sand out because it wouldn't look very nice, but we came up with a design where it actually kind of becomes a feature and it means less work for us. Another thing is when we're 3D printing, we try to keep those layer mines in mind. For layer mines? Did I say layer mines? Yes. <laughs> we try to keep the layer lines that are part of the 3D printing process in mind and maybe even make them a feature. We came up with a topographical Texas where each layer was... Like a layer of the topography. A layer of the topography. So it was better that it was 3D printed instead of worse. Or when we're doing molding and casting, we try to keep it like a one part mold so we don't have to sand down the seam line. This is kind of tied to it, but we try to keep human intervention down as much as possible. So avoiding things that have to be hand painted or hand stitched or hand anything really. I mean, we still do put a little bit of work into it, but we try to minimize it. So going back to this, for example, we have this bottom rounded over and that's because we can take this over to the router table. It's a way to remove tabs. It polishes up and makes it look finished. And it's all part of optimizing our process tied to 
keeping human time down, we try to keep robot time as high as possible so that while they're working, we can work on prepping stock, setting up jigs, coming up with new designs, working with customers, coming up with marketing material. There's so much that you can do to help your business besides making things. Like, come up, design things in your mind and let robots make them. That's, that's what you I like. sound like an evil genius, but yes. <laughs>keep in mind is cost wise it's gonna be hard to beat a big company that has huge econ econ economies of scale it's just it's a losing game but there are other things that you can do that big companies can't do one of those is customizable products or come up with products that respond to trends or seasons you can be a lot more flexible than a big company can be another way to set yourself apart from big companies is customizing I we've started that, but you can go into the details <laughs> <laughs> we've started engraving initials and dates onto the back of our ring dishes for weddings and stuff like that yeah so, it, it takes what literally two minutes of carving mm -hmm. and, and it makes it so much more special and more meaningful to the people you're selling it to and it's something that big companies can't, can't do, do as easily. Yeah. As easily. I mean, well, yeah. Well, they probably can, but they wouldn't bother. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's next? Let's say that you have a product, it's selling really well, and you can't keep up with the demand. Ah! <laughs> oh, you want me to finish that? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the example. We haven't had one of our products go big like that yet, but I have had a lot of experience dealing with this in my past job. When you're selling volumes that large, you can start working with local companies or overseas partners to increase the amount of products you can produce. And if you come to them with a proven sales record, a projection for how much products you're gonna make, they're gonna say, yeah, we wanna do that. They'll work with you, they'll bring down their price and they'll make it more accessible. They don't like people coming to them saying, I have an idea. Oh no, it'd be like, I have an idea. <laughs> It doesn't exist yet. <laughs> but it's gonna be great. They're not gonna be interested. And that's where everything that we've been talking about, the well-designed product with a proven track record that is able to be scaled, that's potentially based in digital means. So you can just send them a file and they can make the same thing that you've been making the whole time. You can have your standards in place. You can have a quality policy and you can grow without really too much downsides. You can also take it a step further and even outsource some of the fulfillment. So you can work with your manufacturing partner, your packaging suppliers, and have all of them send everything to a fulfillment center and they ship it out for you. And that allows you to spend more time working on your next product, your next design, and just continuing to grow. Which takes us to our outro. Yay! <laughs> I really hope this video was useful to you guys and helped give you guys some confidence to start your own business. It's a little bit scary. I think the thing that we struggled with the most is when to start and how to start. I think the tipping point for us is when we were more afraid not to do it than we were afraid to do it. And then we made the jump. And then we made the jump and started doing it. <laughs> Good story. Actually, that was that was just the beginning. And then we started doing YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we still do products on the side, and still we're on still. The side. It's it's, it's, it's really fun cool to keep a and... finger in that world a little bit. Are... <laughs> Where is it? All right. If you guys have any questions, would love to chat with you guys in the comments below. And if you want to help us make more videos, you can support us by checking out our awesome merch, which is at shopevanandcaitlin.com. And if you want more content, sneak peeks, behind the scenes, the after show we're about to record, yeah. you can have her. <laughs> you can head over to patreon.com slash Evan and Caitlin and see that there. Hope to see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Did you say see you that there? I don't know. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> And today we're going to the opportunity. No. Still had done all this research. Re research. Research. Another thing about skull. skull. You yeah. can stay even, keep your, keep it. <laughs> 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 Woo. Yay.